Hey everybody, it's Kim Denny with the Inspired Designs and it is a freezing cold day here in Pittsburgh today so it is a perfect day to stay inside and get crafty. We are going to turn your kit that started out like this into this. So we're going to make this really cute lovebirds photo hanger today. Um, in your kit you have your piece of wood with the twine on it. It has the nails already in it. I took care of all that for you. I painted the wood and, and drilled the holes and put the nails in. Um, you're also going to have your thread colors, so grab those, and you'll have your little bit of string and your four mini clips there, so you want to get those too. The other things that you might need for this project would be, well, you'll definitely need a pair of scissors, um, a Sharpie or something with a blunt edge like that is good to help push down the string in tight spaces and a little bit of super glue to put on your knots at the end uh, helps hold everything into place. Now a couple of tips for you as you're doing your project, take breaks. If you find that you're muttering or growling or talking to yourself under your breath, you might need a break. Some people kind of zen out and fall into like a trance when they string. Other people find it a little bit frustrating. So until you really get the hang of it, just take some breaks. Stretch your hands, do whatever you need to do. Have a nice drink beside you. I'm going to have a cup of tea with me today. You might want to grab a glass of wine if that's your thing. Put on some music or a movie. Sit back and relax. The other thing is I want you to kind of let go. Don't be so precise and so worried about exactly which nail did I go to because there's no exact science to this. The more random, the better. Kids do really well at this because they are able to just kind of go and forget about it, where sometimes adults overthink things and they go real slow, so just kind of let your perfectionism go and relax and have some fun. Um, I think that's all the tips I have for you today, so grab all your supplies and I'll meet you at the crafting table. Okay, so here we are at the craft table and I brought my scissors, super glue, and sharpie as some extra tools. You can set those aside. I also have the items from the kit, the string colors, and the mini clips, the board with the nails in it, and today we are going to make this Lovebirds photo hanger. And it has twine on the top, so you'll be able to hang it on the wall just as soon as you are done. Now, I noticed that my relaxed bathtub, the coffee mug that I just recently made, and the Lovebirds that I previously made were all in the same color palette, so I switched it up for this one. I chose tan for the branch, dark green for the leaves, and I'm going to do the birds in black and gold as a little nod to Pittsburgh. So wouldn't this be super cute in your home team colors? Uh, and I'm going to do red for the heart. So we will go ahead and get started here. Now I want you to keep in mind as you do this project that the time on this video is not necessarily the amount of time it will take you to make your project. It may take longer. You might need to pause the video, rewind it, take a break, stretch your hands. So just take your time. Have some tea, have some wine, listen to some music or a movie. If you get frustrated, walk away for a few minutes. It's supposed to be an enjoyable process. So let's go ahead and get started. We can set these mini clips aside. Those will be the last things that we attach. And I want you to start out with the piece of string, the just separate piece of string that you have. We're going to attach this first before we do any of the color string. And it's going to go on these very two bottom nails. That's where we'll add our clips to and be able to hang our pictures from later. So you just tie it around a nail and then tie it again so it's knotted on and then take your side over to the other end. Now you want it to be pretty close to being straight across but it can have a little give in it. And tie this one over here. Oop, sometimes it takes a minute. <laughs> tie it once and tie it again to secure it into place. There we go. So now you can take your scissors, give it a little trim, but don't trim it real close in. You can leave a little bit hanging, and that way it won't pop off on you. <clears throat> and there we go. There's the picture hanger. So that's the easiest part. Okay, so first we're going to start with the branch, and we go in this order because that will be the, the thing that's closest to the board, and then we'll build the other pieces on top of it to give us a little bit of dimension. So take your brown string and tie it any on any nail 
in this line that is the branch. It doesn't matter where you start. You don't have to do things exactly as I do. This is all going to be kind of random. Um, you can leave the tail hanging. We'll take care of that at the end. And I like to start each layer by outlining the section. So here I'm just going to go under these nails. I'll go up to the point of the branch, go around that, and then come underneath the top layer since it's curved up it's best to go underneath you'll loop around the side nail so see how I looped over the side nail come down the side and again come across the bottom so now we have our section outlined that's where we're going to start making our branch so now you just very randomly go from nail to nail within this outline section you can make some short lines up and down you can make some long lines side to side and just think of it as though you had a crayon in your hand and you're just kind of scribbling to fill in the section. You don't want to overthink it. Actually, kids do really, really well with these projects because they just jump in and go. And I know a lot of times as adults, we're looking for the right way to do things or the perfect way to do things. And really, this project is designed to kind of get you out of that mode, let you relax a little bit and just kind of mindlessly fill in the space. So we're going to create one layer which is touching each nail about once. So that's the end of our first layer. Now we're going to press down the strings. It's okay if you miss some of the nails. It's okay if you touch some of them more than once. If you have spaces that are hard to get into, you can use your Sharpie like I just did. Here I have a string that's a little bit loose, so I'll show you how I deal with that. It must have popped off a nail. So just take that and stretch it until you can get it around a nail where, where it will be tight, and then you're good to go. So that's how you fix that problem. So now we're going to start round number two. And remember, just outline the section again. <clears throat> yep. And I usually lay my board flat on a table, so it's kind of hard when I'm holding it up for the camera to see. But um, just take your time and, and do it. There's no, no race here. So now as we start the second layer, you're going to do the same thing where it's very random and just create some new lines. So you'll be filling in the spaces that are kind of open. And as we create each layer, you'll just keep creating some new and different lines. We're going to do about four or five of these layers. You can go as thin or as dense as you like. So I always tell people, whatever your eye likes, since it's a handmade project, you are in control and there are no rules. So whatever looks good to you is perfect. That's the end of round number two. We're going to press that down. And then go ahead and outline the section again. And this is a nice easy section to outline because it's all straight. And then start round number three. If you find, or like I said, we're going to do four or five. If you find that your thread is popping off of your nails a lot, you can kind of do a loop-de-loop, -loop, which means that you circle around the nail head a couple of times, and that'll hold it on a little bit better. Um, you can see as I'm going, I just kind of go around the nail on the outer edge, but if you find that it's popping off a lot, do, do a loop-de-loop -loop here or there, and that'll help you hang on a little bit better. The other problem when people's thread is popping off is sometimes because they didn't push the previous layer down. So if you need some more room near the top of your nail head, go ahead and take a minute to press that thread down. Here we are at the end of round three. We're going to push that down. Go ahead and outline again. And we're going to do round four, or layer four. If you fall in love with doing string art, you can always get more kits uh, through my Etsy shop. It's inspired.etsy.com. And I will have some new designs coming out every month this year is my plan. So a couple new designs with video tutorials. So if you love it, I hope you'll come back for some more designs.
It's also nice too because if you find a design you really like, you can make it in different colors and it customizes it for the people you're giving it to. Push it down. Here we go. We're outlining for our last time, I believe. And we're starting on our fifth layer. So this will be the last one. I like to usually do four or five, depending on how, how my eye is seeing it. During this last round or last layer, you want to really look for any gaps that you might have or kind of um, spots that are a little sparse because this is your opportunity to fill those in so that everything has a nice consistent look. After round five, press it down again and then take a minute to hold it back or prop it up against something and walk back a little bit because then you'll be able to see if there's any spaces that need filled in that might be not as dense as the other spaces. So if it looks good to you, then we're gonna start doing a little bit of edging here. So for the edging, what you do is loop around two nails. So you're gonna go and loop around two. So I just looped around these first two nails right here and then go up to the next one that you didn't loop around next, go around it and come back to catch the previous one. So you're always looping around two nails. So you go ahead to the next and come back and go ahead to the next and come back. And I do this all the way around the section twice because I like it to be a little bit thicker and it gives it a really nice outlined or a nice finished look. When you get to the end here, it might be easy to turn your board and that way you're still working in the same direction, kind of going forward. And hopefully you can see this well enough on the video. It's just kind of going forward to the next one and coming back. So that was just about once I finished this side here. Uh, that is one time around the whole section. You could stop here if you want. Like I said, I like to do two, so I'm going to go around again. And remember, like I said, um, take your time doing this. We don't have to stay at the same pace, so if you need to pause the video or rewind or stop it and walk away for a while and then come back, you can certainly always do that. I've done a lot of stringing, so I'm pretty used to doing it, but if, if you're not working at the same pace, then I don't want you to feel frustrated. So, just know that you're in control. As you're doing this outline, sometimes it does get really tight up near the nail head and you'll have a lot of string popping off as you're trying to wrap it. So take a second and just gently press that down a little bit with your finger so that you can give yourself some room to work. And as we finish this section, come to the nail where we started and loop to loop around that. So you're wrapping around a couple times. Get your scissors. Leave a nice long tail so that you are able to tie a knot. Sometimes people cut these really short and then they get frustrated. And let me see if I can prop this up a little bit better to, so that you can see how I'm going to tie this knot. So take the end of your string and oh, I didn't have that in shot very well. I'm sorry. I know I do another one later. Basically, I created a loop. Let's see if we can move this a little bit better. Mm, hold on. <laughs> there we go. Let me just try and hold it up and see if I can do it this way. So take the end of the string up around the top of the nail head and create a loop and then pull it through that loop. So you're basically just tying around the top of the nail head. And then you can leave that hang. We'll take care of that later. But just so I can show you now, um, so as we were outlining, you'll see that it gave us some nice 
uh, I'm just arranging some strings here, but it gave us some nice thickness. And you can see I leave my outline near the top of the nails because I like to have some dimension. So the other string is pushed to the bottom and that's at the top, so it gives it a little bit of a 3D effect. You will need to push down on the outline a little bit where we're going to overlap where the leaves are and where the birds sit because we'll be using those nails again. And you'll see that as we go. So let's move on to the leaves. I'm going to grab my green here and start with this leaf over on the left. I'm just going to tie on to any nail. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, there's no rules here. So push that um, string that we tied on for the photo to the bottom so it's against the board and then you're working over top of that. So tie around, tie again. And this is going to be the same process as we, we did above. So here we're going to outline and we're just going up the side of the leaf. We come across three of the nails on the branch and then come back down the other side. So there's one, two, three nails that it touches up here and you could push that brown string down a little bit. You might want to use your Sharpie or a closed pen to push that down if you need to. And that way, um, we're, we're once again, you're going to do four or five layers and remember to outline each one as you go. These sections work up super quickly because they're so small. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can kind of push down a little bit as you go. And so one layer, remember, is touching each nail about one time. It's okay if you've gone over a nail more than once. It's okay if you've missed a nail. And then outline again and we'll do the next layer. And then outline again. And we'll do the third layer I think we're up to here. And now, oh, we must, oh, here, outline again. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Fourth layer. I'm losing count. And it's a small space, so I know it's a little bit hard to see, but it's really the same technique as we did for the branch, so you should be A-OK -okay here. And you just want to make sure that you're filling in any gaps that you have. Outline again. See if there's any spaces that need filled in. This should be our last layer, I believe. Outline one more time. And then that was our fifth. So now we're going to do the same border that we did for the branch where we're looping around two nails and then going and looping around the next two and then go up the other side. and across the top. So that was one time around. You can stop there if you'd like. I said I like to do two, so I'm going to go for another layer. If you know any kids or tweens or Anyone that likes projects like this, I do carry some mini projects in my shop too. Uh, here, so now we're back at the beginning again. I could have tied off at the top, but what I'm going to show you is if you just take this string down along the side of the leaf to where the nail where you tied on originally, loop to loop around that nail, cut yourself a nice long tail, then you can tie your original string and the string together. So that might be easier than making the knot that I was showing you above. Some people just like to tie the string together. And that's it. Your first leaf is totally done. You can see it sits up a little bit higher than the branch. And that's nice because it gives us some dimension to the project. Next, we're going to do the bottom leaf on the right here. And I'm going to just try to turn this so... Whoop, figure out the best way for you to see it. Let's see. We'll turn it this way. I think that's easier. <laughs> I'm working sideways and, and slanted, so bear with me. Okay, so we're going to tie on to here any nail. Tie it twice so it stays on. And we'll outline it. 
So go down to the tip, back up the side. Here we're going to come across three nails on the branch again. So we went down, up, one, two, three, and back down. So now same process as before. We're going to do five layers, random pattern, outline between each one. So what I was saying before is I do carry some mini kits in my shop, which are just seven inch cutout figures that are spray painted metallic gold and come with a little card with some string colors on it. And um, for instance, right now I have an elephant, a brontosaurus, a T-Rex, a mermaid tail, and an ice cream cone. And I'll be adding more um, as I go on. But those are just some nice little mini kits that if you know any young people or tweens, like I said, that might want to do a craft project, or even adults like to do them. I mean, it doesn't have to just be for kids. So if you want a little elephant hanging around, you can check for those in my shop as well. Push down as you need to, don't forget, because that'll give you room to work. If you if you notice that your thread keeps popping off, it's because you need a little bit more room to hook it on. Outline between each layer. I love these little sections because they do work up really nice and fast for us. And this is, I think, our last layer, so kind of make sure that you're getting all the spaces that need covered. And it doesn't have to be solid. If we were working solid, we would be using fabric instead of string. So it is nice to see some of the wood behind the string. It shows off some of the texture and dimension that way. So you don't have to fill it solid. And I think we got it the way I like. I like to hold it back and make sure they're kind of even, that they're filled out about the same. And then we're going to just start the border here, which is the looping every two nails. Loop around two, go to the next, come back. When you get to the end, you might loop to loop around that twice. As you turn the board then, you're ready to go to the next section. And, like I said, you can stop after one layer. I like to go for two. If you want to stay um, up on any new designs that come out, please make sure that you follow my Facebook page, which you can find me under Yinspired on Facebook, which is Y-I-N-Z. P-I-R-E-D. And you can also find me on Instagram under the same name. So here we go. We're back at the original string, or the original nail that the, sh the first string was tied onto. So loop to loop around that nail, cut a nice long tail, and then go ahead and tie those two tails nice and tight together. Take your knot all the way as close to the nail as you can get it, and tie it again. Awesome. Now we're going to hit this third leaf. So take your green up here. It's going to go down the side. We're just touching on one nail of the branch here. So you'll see that as we outline. Tie on to any nail. Sometimes tying the knots for the pe for people is the hardest part of this, so if you can master that, you're in good shape. And then here we just outline the shape. So then we just start our random fill. And like I said, when we outlined, we just hit one nail that overlapped on the branch on this one, whereas on the other leaves we had three. This one, it just came to a point, so we just have one nail that overlaps on the branch. This is a really nice small leaf, so this will fill in quickly. Doing five layers again, outlining between each layer, making sure we're making some nice random lines that fill in the spaces. And 
And if your thread keeps popping off, remember just push your thread down a little bit from the previous layers. All right, make sure that's about the same. Looks good. Push down just a little bit so I have room to work the border. And then it's just looping every two again. In case you like trivia and like numbers like I do, this board has 123 nails in it. And when I start these projects, um, I buy the wood unfinished, so then I paint it. I have a stencil that I drill all the holes through, take that off, and then hammer in those nails for you. So handmade right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for you, and then hand finished in your house. <laughs> Cut a nice long tail again, loop to loop around that nail, and tie it to your original string. And there we have it. Three leaves and a branch. Now we're going to do this larger bird first. I chose black for that one. So whichever color you're doing your larger bird in, grab that color, tie it on to this little peak nail here. This is his tail, the tip of his tail. You could tie it on wherever you want, but that's where I'm starting. And then we'll go down the curve. We're going to go across one, two, three, four nails on the branch and then start curving upward. So here was the tip of the tail. Go down a couple, across four on the branch, and then start your upward climb. One, two, three, four on the branch. Start going up. And then when you get to this nail, you're going to loop to loop around it. And then you're going to go up to the next nail. It's his beak. So we're making his beak here so you can see it makes a little triangle peak right there. Um, go over the curve of his head. You're going to go down this nail up to create his wing. Hook around this nail and then up to create his tail. So this is the outline. You can pause it here if you need to take a look at it for a second. But we started here. We went down across four on the branch, up the curve, looped around this nail, went up to his beak, back, and then up around the curve of his head, up for the wing, down, and then up for the tail. So that is the outline for your big bird. Now it's going to be just the same process that we've been doing. So you're a pro at this by now. We're going to do five layers outlining around each one. creating all kind of random lines. Just be careful that you stay within your outline. So up by the peaks of the tail and where the wing peaks up, don't go outside of those nails because you don't want to cross over into the upper part where it should just be the board. You want to stay within your outline. And if you do, just back it up, take some string off and go back and do it again. When I did my first sign for the lovebirds, which is in the back there on the left, um, I did orange and teal, and I just picked colors that I liked. And then tonight I thought, hmm, maybe I'll do some Pittsburgh colors, because wouldn't this be a nice gift to give, like, grandparents and have your kids um, either school pictures, you could do it in their school colors, or you could do their, uh, if they belong on a team, you could do their team colors with some team pictures hanging from it. 
I thought that would make a nice gift. It would also be nice to do in colors of someone's wedding to give them as a wedding gift. And then they could add their own pictures. If somebody's having a new baby, you could do it in pictures that would match the baby's room or whatever um, theme they have going in there. You could coordinate colors with that. Or for someone's anniversary, you might do it in the couple's personal favorite colors. So lots of choices for you. Oop, my string's popping. Push down a little bit there so it holds on. Outline. And I like doing the outline between each layer because it really does give the sides a nice finished look. So it is worth the little bit of extra effort that it takes to do that. And then we're going to take a look at it, see what I think here. Looks pretty good, so we're going to start the border. Looping around every two nails. Now, since this is a curved piece, it's going to be a little bit different than, say, the leaves were. And when you get into a space where... And I show this better on the Little Bird, um, but I'll just talk to you about it here. But if you get to a space where... If you just go and start looping around the next two, the thread's going to kind of pull away from the nail, and you'll know it when it happens. Then the way to avoid that is loop to loop around the nail that you're on before looping around the next two. And I'll show you that, like I said, on the yellow bird. And on this one, I only outlined this black once and then stopped because I started to realize that I think the black against the brown board didn't show up quite the way that I want it to. So I'm going to fix that in just a minute. So I didn't do the second time around with the outline. So you'll see here I'm tying it off. I just went around once. Loop the loop around the original nail, tie it to the original string that I tied on with, and then we'll get back over and fix that in just a minute. It's not too bad, but it's just not really popping off the board, um, the look of it. So let's go ahead and start the little bird here. I'm going to use my Pittsburgh Gold. Tie on to any nail that you'd like. I'm sure that you're getting the gist of this by now. Helps to watch the video, though, at least to get the outline of it. Oops, that one didn't hang on. Let's try that again. Okay, so here's the outline for this bird. We're going to come down. We're going to go across three. One, two, three on the branch. And then up for the tail. Come down. And then back up for the wing, hook around that one, go up for the curve of the head, hook around this one, and come out for the beak. And there you go. So this is the outline for the little bird, or the smaller bird. Once again, five layers, here we go. Outline between each one, you know the routine. If you're loving this project, I would appreciate um, you sharing our site with anyone that you know that loves handmade things or likes to get a little crafty. Referrals are always welcome, so if you can share us with friends or pass the name along, I would be very grateful for that.
Also, if you want to leave a comment, let us know what's in your coffee mug or teacup or wine glass or what you like to do while you're crafting. Some people like to craft alone. Some people like to do it in groups. This would be fun to get a group of friends together and everybody grab the same kit and pop on the video and do it. Have a little craft night. Girls night in. Guys night in. Everybody night in. <laughs> And these are nice because once you do get the hang of it, you kind of can zen out and it becomes a little bit meditative. So once you really get going, you kind of get lost in the project. I'm just going to fix that one little string. It's on the outside instead of on the inside where it needed to be. Another fun way to do these birds, you could even do them in matching colors, um, like I could have done a layer of yellow and then a layer of black and then yellow, then black, then yellow for one, and the other one do black, yellow, black, yellow, black, to kind of give them a variegated look. So now we're getting close to finishing this guy up and you just want to make sure you take a look at it and make sure you don't have any spots that are bare or more sparse than others. Keep them about equal. All right and now we're going to start on the edging. Now I decided like I said that the black against the dark brown wood um, didn't really pop so I'm going to take some of this yellow and do the outline on the big bird and on this little guy I'm going to take some black so what I'm going to do I didn't do the border here I'm going to go ahead and tie this off um, and that way we'll trim them out in opposite colors and it'll just tie them together a little bit and make the color pop a little bit better so now I'm taking the black and I'm tying it on here the only thing that I didn't do on this bird that I've done on everything else is that loop every two border that we've been doing so that's what I'm coming here with the black to do. I'm just pressing down a little bit so I have room to work without my string popping off. Tie on. And then just start your looping every two borders. So loop around two nails. Go to the next loop back to the next loop back around two around two and then I'll show you when we get up here what I was saying about if your thread is pulling away from the nail so as I'm coming around the curve of his head here. I'm still looping around every two nails. And then when I go to do his beak, if I would loop around those two, then the thread's going to kind of pull away from the nail. And I think I show you closely here. Let's see. No, maybe I didn't. Maybe I do it on the next round. I know I do at some point. <laughs> So in case you didn't know, I filmed the video and then I go back and I do the voiceover. So bear with me as I figure out where we are here. We're still doing the loop every two. This is my second time around because I, remember I said I like to do it twice to give a little bit of a more distinct border. Okay, so here we go. So in this curve, if I would just go to the next two, it would pull away from the nail a little bit. So what I'm going to do again instead is go to this nail and loop de loop and then loop around the next two. And then I will turn my board and start going up the wing. Turn it and start going down. So I'm still doing the loop every two now. So if you have an area where the thread is pulling away from the design, go ahead and do a loop de loop and then do your next 
looping two. Looping two, is that the official term? And you're probably realizing that these projects are even nicer in person than they are on video or in pictures because it's so hard to pick up the real colors and texture of the string and the dimension. So I'm sure you are loving your project. If you're not, walk away from it and come back. Here we're going to do a gold border around the blackbird. Same way, just tie onto any nail and then we're going to loop two all the way around twice. Um, if you find that you're not loving your project, it's good to put it down, walk away from it, have somebody hold it up two or three feet away from you. You need a little bit of distance to be able to see it again because sometimes when you stare at these strings and nails for so long, your eyes kind of go a little wonky. So it is good to take breaks or come back to it tomorrow and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that really looks pretty good. So it is surprising when I do home parties with these, um, people get really kind of like, oh, I don't think I like this. And then they take a break, go get something to eat and drink, and they come back and they're like, oh, it looks really good. Or I hold it back a couple feet so that they have some um, distance between them and can get some perspective. And it does make a big difference. So try that out. People keep asking me if this is through any kind of a company, and it's not. I'm just an independent artist and maker, so that's what I was saying. I do appreciate, um, you know, if you pass along our sites or give our Facebook page or Instagram a like, it definitely helps me stay connected with you and um, spread the word about what we're doing. I also donate 10% of all of my sales to local organizations for art supplies for kids programs or community programs. So thank you if you purchased a kit. Uh, part of your purchase price went towards that. So here we are. We're doing the second one, second border all the way around. And see how this is making this blackbird really... Um, kind of come to life a little bit more against that dark background so that's what I love about making projects is as you're going through and you're like wait that's not quite working the way that I wanted it to and then you just try something new and it comes together so don't be afraid to try it and if I did this and I hated it I could have just as easily taken this border off so definitely don't be afraid to try something new and see what you think about it because you just never know. All right, we are just about done with this. And then all we have left to do is the little heart. And we are in the home stretch here. All right, back at the beginning, you know the routine. We loop a loop around that nail, cut ourselves a long tail, tie these two tails together. And voila, we've got two lovely birdies in coordinating colors. And the borders definitely did help them pop and kind of ties it together nicely. So I'm happy with that. All right, we're going to do the heart. And best way to sit this might just be this way. So I have red for my heart. Get whatever color you're doing your heart in and tie it on. This one works up super quickly because it's a nice small space. Outline your heart. I'm bet betting that you could do this little section without me, but let's do it together. We've come this far together. So there it is, the heart. And once again, do a random layer. Outline around again. Do that five times over or until your heart or is or until your heart is as full as you would like it to be. Just make sure that when you're going across the nails towards the top that you don't cover up your little divot for the heart. You know, leave the little indentation there and don't, don't go across the nails on the top, I guess. If that makes sense. Stay within your lines. 
stay within your outline is what I should say. <laughs> All right. And if this gets hard holding on again, push those down. It's a teeny tiny space to work in. Sometimes the tinier spaces are nice because they go faster. Sometimes they get a little frustrating because they are so darn tiny. And then, of course, we're going to finish this off by doing almost, almost the loop every two. Oh, here's another outline. And there we go. We're, now we're looping every two. Just go right around. This one goes quickly. And then I'll show you how to finish off this project and you'll be ready to hang it up. I would love for you to share a photo of your either work in progress or your finished project on my Facebook page, which is once again, Yin Inspired. Um, feel free to share with us what you're making. Let me see it hanging on your wall. If you've put pictures in it, I'd love to see it that way too. Whatever you do, I love to see. Or some people um, add extra embellishments to these projects. We had a snowman we were doing for Christmas, and I had some people add, like, um, glued-on snowflakes around him. I had somebody do the Christmas tree truck, and she used Mod Podge on the wood and decoupaged some, like, scrapbooking paper on it and made a real nice background. So you can definitely embellish however you'd like, but I'd love for you to share that so I can see what you're doing out there all right here we go to finish this off grab your little bit of super glue if you have it if you don't you can just trim your ends um, I just use this as a little preventative just so that nothing starts unraveling put one little drop of super glue anywhere you have your knots and by the time you work your way all the way around your first little bit will be dry and then you'll be able to trim it up so if you just keep working around Super glue is also good to have on hand when you're trimming off your ends. If you accidentally clip one of the strings that was not supposed to be clipped and it needs to stay in place, you can just try to super glue it to whatever nail it's closest to and it should hold in place for you so you don't have a massive unraveling. All right, now grab your scissors and trim as close as you can without hopefully trimming any important strings that are still supposed to be attached. And it's amazing once you get all these loose ends trimmed up how it pulls everything together and your project looks so nice and crisp. This is These projects are really nice because you really can't mess them up. This is something that just about everybody can do even with no crafting experience. All right, here we have it. Voila! We're going to grab our little mini clips, clip those right over the line here, and that's what you'll hang your pictures or notes from. Your project will have twine on it, so you can hang it right up on the wall. And then, like I said, snap a picture, share it with us on Facebook. Um, find us on Instagram, and I'd love to see what you made. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye-bye.